it doesn't really hurt the body. It's weird though. It hurts. Yeah, it's because it's kind of a weird thing. It's like it's hard to explain, it, but it's gross. You can feel it off. Yeah, if you feel the pop and it doesn't hurt too bad. I've been playing there with the pop. Yeah. I was laying next to a woman that has been on the scene the night she had her ACL and her ACL all in one fell. That's and it was like, it was like, it was like what? She had a four ride scholarship for volleyball to Western Washington. So you're going to say Wisconsin? She did. Go Rangers. I feel so bad for the girls who just played against two girls. She went to, she, that, she yeah. lost her scholarship to Western and then she bought out at a Juco in uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. And they like won the championships in Miami and she plays at Idaho State. Well, not a lot of people today. If the word optional was to scare them off. Optional means very much on the Optional is on the word that's in the I don't know if I actually have a time. So, we're probably going to end up having to go on the summer beach. So. It, it's okay, it's optional, but it's like you're not going to do that. So, let's do a little track workout video. We probably recommend you guys do these workouts. They're optional. Did you get a person on the first like summer? It might be useful or helpful. I also know at this point of the week, there are a lot of people who like just have a whole bunch of assignments and things going on, and this isn't necessarily the best time. But I appreciate you making it. Uh, so today's class is an optional midterm review. Um, what I'll be doing is um, giving just an overview of the week and some of the things that we've gone over. Um, going over the study guide and practice questions, opening things up to your questions, and then we'll be doing a game in just a little bit. So um, let's talk a little bit about some of the things to expect in the midterm. Uh, so uh, basically we've gone through four different weeks of things in the class, um, and you might take some time to look through the study guide or to think about uh, some of these ideas that you might want some more time spent on if you uh, were gone for any particular class meetings. Uh, so the first week of class was an opportunity for us to go over the fundamentals of interpersonal communication. So um, I've tried to highlight some of the main points that we covered in each week. It's not exhaustive, but it will help you as you're refreshing and thinking about your notes and looking back to them. So uh, one thing that I think is a really good starting point is remembering the communication model that we talked about and the six major parts that that model has, right? We have sender, receiver, feedback, noise, uh, the channel, right? Uh, and there's a couple other elements such as environment that also play into our communication. So thinking about how this model helps us to understand the way that we transmit messages uh, is a good way to start. You can also think about the perception process, right? Uh, the process of intending, interpreting, and organizing material. Uh, perception is how we take in and understand communication. We also went over a couple of major ideas from the course, including a couple of theories like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where we have the bottom of the pyramid with the most important needs and the top with things like self-actualization and the idea of reducing cognitive and behavioral uncertainty through uncertainty reduction theory. The second week um, was an opportunity for us to look at intrapersonal communication, right? So that was the week where we looked at communication with ourselves. Uh, and the ways in which interpersonal communication shapes our interaction. We talked about the difference between personality and temperament, personality being shaped by culture, uh, temperament being shaped much more biologically. Uh, we also talked about the different circles and the idea of those circles overlapping uh, to create a stable sense of yourself. And then we talked about some of the dispositions, including communication dispositions, uh, socio-communicative dispositions, and different attachment styles, such as dismissing, secure, and fearful. So interpersonal communication and elements of personality, 
for the big things to know from the second week. <laughs> During last week, or the third week, uh, so a couple of weeks ago, we spent some time looking at both verbal and nonverbal communication. So uh, there's a lot of content here that I think um, if I was studying, I would dedicate a lot of time toward uh, looking at. So uh, what we looked at were verbal uh, elements of communication, the usage of language and language rules, such as semantics, syntactic, and pragmatic rules. We looked at some different categories of language, such as formal and informal language, the usage of denotative and connotative meaning. And then uh, we also looked at nonverbal communication. As a reminder, right, nonverbal communication categories include things such as uh, the use of vocalics, haptics, and proxemics, how we use things such as tone of voice, physical distancing, gesturing, and so on. Uh, and functions are things such as complementing, substituting, or accenting. They are why we choose to use nonverbal communication. And then last week uh, was our uh, week on culture. So uh, we spent some time talking about what culture is, right? Defining culture in terms of the norms, hard-coded rules, the informal rules, uh, and so on. We talked about self-esteem, including collective self-esteem uh, and elements of uh, collective self-esteem, right? So the idea of importance to identity, membership, esteem, and so on. We talked about the six spectrums of culture, uh, things such as uh, individualism versus collectivism. And then we talked about Stella Pink Tooney's space negotiation theory. You're asked on a question to look at theories. This is a really good one to explore. So uh, those are kind of overviews of the four weeks. Again, if there is a week of those four that you find that you've missed some classes for, that you feel a little bit behind on, that you have reading to catch up on, I definitely recommend looking through those and giving yourself some extra time to review those. What I'd like to do next is uh, go over the practice questions for the midterm exam, right? So um, these, again, you're available uh, to take them as many times as you'd like. Uh, and you're still welcome to send me the uh, practice short essay questions, and I'll let you know the grade and feedback you should expect to receive. Intrapersonal communication, how many people say true? Good. So the answer here is false, right? Uh, intrapersonal communication runs a range between an internal dialogue, right? The conscience or voice in your head, your little Jiminy Cricket, all the way up to talking to yourself, like um, listening to the new Taylor Swift album and saying, wow, I am an anti-hero. So uh, question number two, right? Uh, your friend Jim says, I need a fork. Using the dictionary definition of the word fork, you recognize it's a piece of silverware. How many people say pragmatic, semantic, syntactic, or contextual? Yeah, so um, what we want to think about here is the way that a dictionary definition uh, helps to shape our understanding of a word. So uh, Tim tells Janet that she got a leading role in the play. As Tim shares the news, Janet, Janet starts smiling and nodding. So using the communication model, right, which would best describe Janet smiling and nodding? How many people say receiver, environment, feedback, or noise? Yes. So feedback is the best answer here, right? Feedback involves the use of things like nonverbal communication to understand and respond to a message. So gendered language, right? Uh, the usage of the term fireman, right? Which we've seen a lot more terms uh, used in the more gender neutral contexts like firefighter or chair. How many people say Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Muted group, uncertainty reduction, social penetration. So the best answer here would be muted group because uh, under muted group theory, it's the idea that a dominant group uh, in society has helped to create and fashion language in this way, right? Uh, historically, the uh, more masculine control over language to describe things like firefighting has meant that that term has been used in a gendered context in the past. Ken grew up in the United States, but believes that his culture is better than other cultures. How many people say this is co-culture, transactional, 
ethnocentrism. Music group. Yes, so eth ethnocentrism is the belief that your own culture and experience are better than those of other cultures. There are these two short essay questions. Um, these are good examples of the types of questions you should expect to see on the exam. There's a chance that one of those two might even be on the exam, right? Uh, so one of these is about different theories. Uh, so uh, two major theories. There's a lot that you could choose from here. Some of the theories you could choose from could include things uh, such as uncertainty reduction theory, base negotiation theory, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, those are some examples of ones that you could draw from. Muted group theory is another one. Um, so comparing and contrasting those theories could really uh, help you on those parts. And then um, you might use these theories to make sense of a conversation and fill in the gaps. For instance, um, under uncertainty reduction theory, people start to self-disclose and open up to reduce the anxiety and uncertainty that they experience. This next question is about culture. So defining culture, you might consider defining culture in the context of rules and norms, the hard-coded guidelines, as well as some of the um, regulations that we as members of cultures have. Collective self-esteem is important for communication because it's how we view ourselves in relationship to the group. Do we like the group? Do we like who we are within that group? That gets into collective self-esteem. And then as we've gone over, right, there's a lot of different spectrums of culture that we could look at. We could look at individualism versus collectivism. Um, we could look at time orientation. So there's a lot of different examples that you could draw from culture. So again, you're welcome to continue to practice on these questions if you would like. Before we get into our game for today, um, I just want to give you another quick look at the study guide. So does anybody have any questions? going in uh, about any of these terms or ideas, anything that we can talk about together as a group, terms or concepts that you're finding a little bit confusing or like an example of? Sure. Right, so we start with the elements of interpersonal communication, communication model, perception, elements of emotional intelligence and intrapersonal communication, these different parts of self and how we define the self, getting into week two, attachment styles and dispositions, getting into week three, we start to look at the role of language, some of the ways that language has these different rules and functions. What were the six, I forget what it's called, of culture? Oh, the six spectrums? Yeah. Yeah. So the six spectrums of culture um, are six different measurements that we use to define and compare culture. Uh, let me just pull up last class of slides to make sure that I get them all entered correctly, right? So the six spectrums of culture. include low versus high context, right? How uh, direct a message is versus how subtle it is. Individualism versus collectivism. Um, you know, are you in a society that values personal achievement or the needs of the group? Masculinity versus femininity, which is defined in terms of how emotional distribution of work among group members looks, right? So a more masculine society has more distribution of labor on the basis of gender, uh, more feminine society less so. Uncertainty avoidance is how willing you or unwilling you are to take in new information. Long versus short term orientation. Long term tends to do a lot of planning and punctuality. Short term tends to value the moment and not having rigid plans. And indulgence versus restraint. Uh, pursuing individual pleasures uh, versus holding those things back. Good question. What are meta messages? Yeah, so meta messages, right, refer to subtleties um, and sort of the between the lines meaning uh, when we try to communicate, right? So meta messages uh, essentially provide us with an implicit uh, message that um, might not necessarily align with the direct verbal component. 
Uh, so a really good example of this, right, is um, if somebody is um, telling you information, like um, trying to uh, tell you how to turn to get onto campus, but is doing so in a really condescending way, like they seem like they're very patronizing, right? That would be the meta message that somebody is disrespecting you and how they're telling you that information. So then we move on to nonverbal communication, right? And some of the elements of nonverbal communication, including these uh, six different functions and the different categories of nonverbal communication, Zentai. And then we get into some of these elements of culture, cultural intelligence, the challenges of ethnocentrism and collective self esteem. And again, for the readings, I'm just asking you to go through uh, those weeks of the rich readings. So I will return to this at the end. Um, but what I would like you to do is um, take a second to think about a nickname uh, that you would like for yourself. So um, you will understand in just a minute why this is something I'm asking for. Ten. Okay, so let's start here on this slide, Kristen. Uh, do you have a nickname that you'd like? Stan. Stan. Okay. Move on down. A nickname. Okay. Nice. Back. Okay. And way. Nice. All right. So uh, out of these names, I am quite impressed with Nighthawk. How many people have seen Jeopardy before? I guess I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. So uh, I put together just a little Jeopardy game. Um, and the idea here is just to have a little fun um, way for us to review. So um, the way the Jeopardy typically works, right, is that you will be given an answer. And what you have to do is identify the term. Oftentimes in the past, they'll frame it as a question like, what is X? Uh, so for instance, uh, this is a popular breakfast dish. What is an omelet? But you can just say what the term or idea is. Uh, you don't have to frame it as a question if you don't want to. Uh, so uh, when we start, um, you'll have the chance to um, try to address the question if you uh, are able to get it right, you'll get those points added on. Um, we'll also give you the chance to choose uh, the category uh, as well as the number, right? The higher the number is, the more difficult it is. Uh, so of communication theories, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, culture, and interpersonal communication. Um, if you get it right, uh, then you'll have the chance to choose the next category. And you can keep the streak going for a maximum of three times. Um, if the person who's up does not know the answer, uh, you can raise your hand as well. And uh, if you get it right, then uh, you'll get that added in and you'll get to pick the next question. So um, Nighthawk, why don't you start us out? So uh, choose uh, a category and then choose uh, a level here from 100 to 500. Nonverbal for 100. 
This function involves using nonverbal communication instead of verbal communication. Is there kinesthetics? No, nope, that is not a function. Z dependent. Correct. So uh, this is substitution, right? So substitution is one of the um, functions of nonverbal communication. If you are substituting, you're using nonverbal instead of verbal. Okay. So, um, Kenway, you're up. What uh, would you like to pick? I'll take uh, nonverbal 300. 300. The use of physical distancing is an example of this kind of nonverbal communication. Uh, no. Nope. Sure. Nobody else has it. You can give it another shot. Close. Oh. Yes. Close enough. What is proxemics? All right. So we'll get you uh, one more. Choose a category and number. Culture for 200. A culture that generally is focused on the well being of the group. Anybody else want to take a stab at this one? So I'll give you a hint. It's one of the spectrums. Getting closer. You have the right answer in there. Yes. So a collectivist culture, right? Collectivism would be the best answer here. <clears throat> All right. So Max, you can pick. Uh, all communication things for five hundred. All right. Uncertainty reduction theory suggests we try to reduce these two types of uncertainty. Uh, yeah. Behavioral and cognitive. Correct. Cognitive and behavioral uncertainty. Cognitive, right, is uncertainty in our heads and our knowledge. Behavioral is being uncertain as to how a member of a group is going to act. So good answer here. Give you one more. Verbal communication for 500. Verbal communication for 500. 
interface. How we use grammar, spelling, and punctuation can be described through this rule. So Nick, I did see your hand up first. Yes. All right. So Nick, you're up. Intrapersonal for 500. All right. This is possible when self image, self worth, and ideal self overlap. What is so it's a little different. It's a different term here. Not quite. Yeah. No. Yes. Thanks, Bree. Right. Self actualization. The top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? We achieve self actualization when we have those things overlapping because we can understand um, that we are kind of how we want to be to some extent, right? We're able to line those parts up of our identity. So, good answer here. Bree, you can pick. Verbal for 400. Specialized and technical language is known as this. Anyway, oh, um, okay, we'll give you another shot, Bree. Uh, what is jargon? Jargon. All right. Right. So jargon, you might think about like the usage of very specialized phrases. If you're talking about your work and people have no idea what you're talking about, right? Uh, that would involve the use of jargon. We'll give you one more brief. Uh, Nonverbal for, non for 200. The peace sign is an example of this verb. Not quite. Close. Anybody else? Close. Not quite. No. What's that? You are getting closer, right? Think about a specific, like standing in for. No. Nope. So this is a tricky one. Uh, so I'll toss this question. Uh, this is an example of an emblem, right? So we use an emblem like a peace sign uh, or something similar to represent uh, based on cultural meaning. But I also recognize this could fit under something like substituting uh, as well. So uh, we'll throw this one out uh, and uh, we'll start over. So uh, Grace, how about you pick a category for us? Verbal for 300. The use of spoken and written word can be best described with this term.
That's okay. No. Nope. On the right track. So that one is, I think, close enough, right? Because that's involving the use of language, right? So um, Max will give you that because that's close enough. Uh, you can pick. Culture for 500. Culture for 500. A specific and small locality can be best described through this term. Anyway, I saw your hand up. Microculture. Microculture, right? So microculture. Um, one way to remember this is to think about uh, you have a culture, right? That's the big circle. You have a co-culture, which is the smaller circle. Uh, and then you have the microculture, which is the smallest culture within that. So you might have football culture. You might have football culture in the United States. And then you might have uh, the EOU football team. All right. You choose another one for us anyway. Uh, communication theories for 400. Theories for 400. This concept suggests that we use imaginary performance to think of how we present ourselves to other people. Oh, yes. Yes. Looking glass though. Great answer. All right. Stan, you can pick. Um... Theories for 300. Under muted group theory, this group has control over language. So I did see your hand up first, but yes. So dominant members would be the correct answer here. Can pick. Uh, Nonverbal for 500. Nonverbal for 500. This function involves managing the communication encounter, such as gesturing for someone to sit down. Yes. So, uh, saw your hand up first last time. So, yes, uh, regulating is the best answer here. Right. We use regulating to manage our communication with other people. For instance, uh, tapping your wrist and saying "got to go" uh, would be an example of regulating. All right. And what you can pick? Theories for two hundred. Theories for two hundred. This theory suggests that we have basic survival needs at the bottom, self-actualization at the top. In ways, um, uh, hierarchy. Not <laughs> uh, no, it's close enough. Okay. Maslow's. Uh, so Abraham Maslow, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So again, it's the pyramid. We have basic survival, shelter. Then we start to get into our belonging and need for connection, self-actualization. And that helps us to explain why it is that we choose to communicate. All right, you can pick. Uh, verbal communication. Verbal for 200. The idea that our communication can be more ambiguous or direct can be best described through this ladder. Three? Levels of abstraction. Yes. So the abstraction ladder. So, um, you know, uh, Talking at the very top, interpersonal communication at the bottom. How specific or general our language is uh, that we choose to use with other people uh, is described through abstraction. You can pick three. Uh, Nonverbal for 400. Nonverbal for 400. This accounts for up to 93% 
of our communication face to face. Yes. Not quite, but on the right track. Oh, yes, nonverbal communication. I'll give you one more. Uh, verbal for 100. This term is the dictionary definition of a word or dictionary meaning of a word. Uh, okay. Semantic is technically correct. It could also be the denotative meaning, right? So mm -hmm. if we're looking at the meaning of a word, denotative would fit there. Uh, Max, a side hand up so you can go next. Culture for 400. The unwritten guidelines that members of a culture have can be best described with this concept. Did I hear that from? Yes. So, uh, Henway, yes, that's correct. Norms. Right. So, cultures have uh, the hard coded rules, uh, norms, right? We don't do that here. Uh, those are the practices the culture would do. Okay. Um, I'll take communication two for 100. That's a theory. This theory concerns the ways that we manage our reputation in cultures. Theory of uh, Yeah, so close enough, face negotiation theory. So Bryson, let's give you an opportunity. Feel free to pick a category. Let's go culture for 300. Culture for 300. The idea that we manage our public image of ourselves and cultures can be best described by this idea. Not quite. So this is similar to the last one. So last time the term was face negotiation theory. Uh, within that, we manage our public image. Face work, yes. So face work is within face negotiation theory, how we manage our reputation. All right, we'll let you pick. Culture for 100. Culture for 100. The idea that one's own culture is better than the culture of other people is best described as what? Yep. Ethnocentrism. You can pick again. Uh, interpersonal for 100. Interpersonal for 100. This involves communicating with yourself and can range between an internal dialogue to actually actively talking to yourself. So intrapersonal communication, yeah. So uh, Tuck, let's have you pick. Interpersonal for 200. This refers to the version of yourself that you would like to be. Ideal self. Correct. What is ideal self? Three or four hundred? Um, so four hundred. Four hundred. All right. This refers to a perception of control over somebody's own life experiences. Yes, so Bryson got it. A locus of control, right? That's all right. Uh, in an internal locus of control, you'd say, I have control over my experiences. I choose my destiny. External locus of control says the world is chaos. I don't really have that control for myself. And then lastly, we've got interpersonal for 300. Biologically determined, and its features are evident from early childhood. Temperament. So temperament, right, is one extreme uh, that says that biological determinism uh, is a big factor here. You can think about dogs who are bred to be more or less aggressive. 
Um, personality would refer more to culture and elements that we develop over our life experiences. All right, so uh, Henway uh, is our leader here with uh, 2,900 points. Coming in at second place, we have Bree with 1,600. And third place, we have Max with 1,300. So um, hope you found that kind of fun and a good way to refresh on some of these ideas. Um, I will also take this game board and uh, post it on Canvas to help you with review as well. Uh, I know there were a couple uh, questions that could have uh, multiple answers, like the use of emblems, nonverbal communication. The actual questions on the exam shouldn't be that tricky or have those multiple answers like that. So um, that, uh, I think, otherwise is pretty straightforward. So you might think back to parts of this that you know you want to spend a little bit more time on, like maybe the theories, or culture, or an area that you would like to cover a little bit more. So I'll take the chance now to see are there any other questions about any of these terms or ideas that are things to know for the exam? Uh, I wouldn't mind if no one else has anything going over the cultural spectrum things again. Yeah. So the six spectrums of culture? Yeah. Kind of what they yeah. So uh, six spectrums of culture. Number one is low versus high context, right? So in a low context culture, communication is direct. Um, you say what you mean. There's little space for subtlety, right? So um, again, that example of uh, if you don't want to do the laundry, right? You just say, no, I don't want to do the laundry. I'm not in the mood. A high context culture involves the use of nonverbal communication and subtleties and elements of that culture that impact the message. So uh, you might say maybe or yes, uh, but look off to the side or sound hesitant, uh, where the cues of nonverbal communication play a big role. Individualism uh, versus collectivism and in individualistic cultures, right? It's the achievement of the person uh, and about doing what helps them. Uh, collectivist cultures are about the group and doing things that support the group. An example is how advertising is marketed depending on different cultures. Uh, masculinity and femininity refer to the emotional distribution of work. So in more masculine cultures, there are more defined roles in terms of who is doing what tasks for labor. Uh, in more feminine uh, cultures, it's more egalitarian in its distribution of work. We have uncertainty avoidance. Low uncertainty avoidance means that you are um, more likely to try new things, right, and embrace new ideas. Uh, maybe you are an adventurous eater and you'll always try a new cuisine once. Um, high uncertainty avoidance means that you're unwilling to engage with new information or try new things in the same way. So you stick to your meat and potatoes. Long versus short term orientation is how cultures approach time. So in long-term orientation, there's oftentimes planning and scheduling and an emphasis on punctuality and being on time for things. Uh, under short-term, things are a lot more casual. There's a greater emphasis on enjoying or taking in the moment uh, with less strict scheduling. And then indulgence versus restraint. In indulgence, cultures tend to focus more on the pleasures or hedonistic elements that they enjoy. In restraint, there's a greater emphasis on a culture holding back on uh, certain things that they might consider to be unacceptable and accurate. Good question. Any other questions or things that you would like us to cover? How are people feeling heading into the midterm this week? Pretty good. Pretty good. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I hope this one is able to go better. Um, if you're looking through the study guide or the notes and you find any time between now and the end of the day tomorrow, if you have any other questions or would like me to just email you anything else, uh, please let me know. Uh, remember, the window uh, for the midterm will open up uh, beginning of the day on Wednesday. It'll close on Friday. 
We're not meeting this Wednesday or Friday. You can take the exam wherever you'd like. You have two hours once you choose to take it. Uh, best of luck with completing the exam. Um, again, I'm here to help, and uh, I hope that things will go well for you on it. So um, I will see you again next Monday on Halloween. And uh, I may or may not be in a costume. Feel free to wear your own if you would like.